Good morning, church family. It's always such a gift to be up here and see all your smiling faces in the Lord's house. So thank you all for being here. For those of you that are unable to attend and you're watching online, we pray for the day that you'll come and join us in person. I'm Ashley Wade. I'm here to assist the Most Reverend Joanne Cooper today with today's service. And for anyone that's ever thought about volunteering to be a liturgist, all you need to do is see Miss Linda Butler there, and she will happily sign you up as a liturgist. You need no experience. Just have Jesus in your heart. He'll do the rest for you. So first of all, the announcements. Uh, the Jesse trees are in the gallery. If you'd like to help a child this Christmas, grab a tag, write the number in your name on the list provided, and return your wrapped gift with a tag by December the 9th. Now, a really cool one is Breakfast with Santa. A pancake breakfast with Santa is Saturday, December 7th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. It's in the Family Life Center. There will be Christmas activities, all kinds of pancakes, of course, and the best part, a visit with Santa himself. He's going to be here. Uh, so we also need some volunteers uh, to help set up on that. And we need the volunteers on Friday, December 6th, also in the Family Life Center. And then uh, we also need help with the cleanup on Monday because those reindeer really are some messy creatures. Uh, so that's December 9th from 1 until 3. And there are sign-up sheets for that in the gallery as well. Of course, you can see Miss Michelle Joyce, and she'll give you any other further details. There will also be a church-wide Christmas dinner, Sunday, December 8th at 5 in the Family Life Center. There will be Christmas bingo, of course, a Methodist potluck, can't do without that, uh, with side dishes. Uh, the church will provide chicken and a cookie exchange. The next part should be really interesting. The stage will be set up if you have a talent to share with everyone. Hmm. Also, uh, the next bed buildup for Heaven, Sleep in Heavenly Peace is Saturday, December, December 7th from 8 to 11.30. What I always like to say is, if you build them, Paul Warner will fill them. <laughs> the Christmas poinsettias, order forms are in the gallery, and the deadline to order those is December 8th. So that concludes your announcements this morning. And if you would, let's all please stand and greet each other in the name of the Lord Jesus. got to say that's pretty cool, Jacob and the choir. I mean, to add some music like that, we're a social church and we can never sit down after the standing greet with one another, so it's nice to have some music while we're doing it. So now, if you could join me in the call to worship, it's responsive. I will say the first part, and we will all say in unison the second part. Uh, you can find it in your bulletins and also up here on the board. We come to worship Jesus Christ, Alpha and Omega, the one who is, who was, and is to come. His name is Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the ruler of kings of the earth, bread of heaven, God with us, good shepherd, true vine, eternal word, great I am, wonderful counselor, prince of peace. We come to worship Jesus, the Christ, King of kings, and Lord of lords, forever and ever. Amen. And now in unison, if we can say the opening prayer. God of eternity, we stand with courage of those who insisted 
even in perilous times, that not even the most powerful rulers of this earth hold our eternal destiny in their hands. We are secure in Christ, who reigns in just, whose power is endless, and whose love is unfathomable. God of eternity, we join the chorus of saints who continue to declare that Christ is our King. Amen. Now if you'll stand as able for our opening hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus, verses 1, 3, and 6, United Methodist Hymnal number 154. Joe will have children's time. Thank you, Miss Lori. Hey, good morning, Miss Lolo. <clears throat> good morning. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you this morning. Let's see what Miles has. Oh, wow. Hmm. Uh, are these from your birthday, leftover from your birthday party? Yes, big 11. So I'm not really sure. I know it's Harry Potter. So represents that. And then, oh, this is for me. Oh, I can't. I can open these. Oh, let's see. Oh wow. Oh wow. All kinds of surprises today. What's in that one? Oh look. Little characters. And they're soft and unique. They all follow the story, right? Okay, and they, and they go inside here. Hmm, let's see, let's see. How are we going to bring this together for Christ the King Sunday? Whew, let's see. Well, I know in my own life, things don't always fit the way I think they should. And I need a little help. No, really, I need some help. <laughs> But, if we remember that even when something is difficult, and it may be a little challenging, and like Reverend Joe, I don't always understand what it means, but I can go to my friend Miles, or I can go to my other friends, and I can say, could you help me understand? Could you help me open this up? Could you help me put it back together? 
Because what's inside, each one of those represented a character, right? Each one of those represented a person. And on this Sunday, which is the last Sunday of the liturgical year, it's a time that we proclaim Jesus as King, as Lord of our lives, because we know that when things are difficult, Jesus always sees who we truly are on the inside, right? And once we're able to embrace that and the softness of love and our hearts and friendship, things are shared with us and we're able to share things with others, right? And isn't that what it's all about? Because Jesus wasn't a king that just ruled like that, did he? He was gracious and loving and he gave. He gave of himself. He died on a cross so that we could know just how much and deep his love was because inside of all of us, there's a unique person that was created to be loved and to offer love. So, phew. Thank you, Miles. All right. And thank you, friends, for helping me untangle that, right? So who wants the mystery bag for next week? Anybody? Hmm? Thank you. All right. Let's have a prayer. Dear God, for the gift of surprises, for the gift of stories, and most of all, for the gift of your love, we say thank you. Amen. Thank you. We got to try to play Stump the Preacher, and she did quite well. So good job, Reverend Joe. <laughs> if you would please join me in our affirmation of faith. It's the traditional one, number 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As our acolytes and ushers come forward to receive of God's tithes and our offerings, I do want to invite you at this time, if you haven't already, to give us a record of your attendance. You find that attendance pad. Normally it's in the center of the pew, but if you would just write your name there. Um, because, and I say it time and time again, you can probably say it with me, but it's, it's true and fresh on my heart every time that I say it. It's an opportunity for me to look at these sheets each week, to pray for you by name. Our staff looks at these sheets each week, and we offer a prayer and as we read each one. And so those of you who are in this space, those of you who are worshiping with us online, Thank you for your faithfulness. You know, you heard in the announcements about Christmas breakfast with Santa and the bed build, both on the same day. And so 
just an opportunity to love on our kids. And so as we give of God's tithes and our, and our gifts, our offerings, resources, there's also an opportunity to serve body, mind, and spirit, to truly take the church, the body of Christ, outside of these walls. And so how you give and how you support the church is used in beautiful and powerful ways. So thank you. Let us pray. Dear God, for the opportunity to give, for the opportunity to stay curious about how we can be your hands and feet extended, we give you thanks for the resources that are offered and the spirit of gratitude and expectation in which they are offered, we say thank you. For this beautiful, strong church family who truly desires to please you, to share your love with one another and this community, thank you for how their generosity is expressed not only in our community, but throughout the world. Thank you. So take what is given and guide us in using it in a way that is pleasing to you so that lives may be changed, even our very own. Amen.
as we come to this time of prayer. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, choir. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful spirit in this place this morning, and I never take that for granted, what it takes to get to church by 9 a.m., and especially those of you with little ones. Um, it just shows your love for community, your love for one another, and your love for Jesus, and so thank you for that. And so as we enter into this time of prayer, I never take for granted what your week has been like and the week that you have ahead and the joys and the struggles and all of life. So I just invite us all just to take a deep breath to remember why we got up so early on a Sunday morning. To sense the love of God in our hearts. Let us pray. Gracious and sovereign God, as we gather in this sacred space, our hearts are brim with gratitude for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. In this season of thanksgiving, we lift up our voices to offer you praise and thanks for the abundance of your grace, your provision, and your enduring love. We thank you for the beauty of creation, of creation that surrounds us here in southwest Louisiana, the fertile lands, the vibrant communities, the rich tapestry of cultures that enrich our lives. On this Christ the King Sunday, we also come to acknowledge and to celebrate the reign of Christ our King. We proclaim the majesty and sovereignty of your Son, Jesus Christ, who rules with justice, mercy, and peace. We thank you for his life, his teachings, and his sacrifice, for he has shown us the way to eternal life and has made us citizens of his eternal kingdom. So, Lord, in this time of gratitude and reverence, we pray for those who are in need, especially those on our prayer list, Linda, Les, Larry, Mark, and Mark, Danny, Sam, Barbara, Macy, Peggy, Ray, Tommy, and our beautiful friends at the children's home. We also remember those who hunger, those who are lonely, those who are suffering. May your love and provision reach them through our hands and our hearts. Help us to live out our call as your people by showing kindness, compassion, and generosity to all. We ask that you continue to guide us as a congregation to walk faithfully in the path of your Son, our Savior, embracing the spirit of thanksgiving and living under the reign of Christ. May our lives reflect his love and lordship in all that we do. And as a sign of our faith, and as a sign of our desire to walk in union with you, we join our voices to pray that prayer that Jesus himself has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, no, no, no. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit Children pray, send us love. 
During the month of November, our sermon focus has been Pray It Forward. And so uh, you should have received in the mail this week, and I'm grateful to Heather for putting that together and getting that out for us. That was no easy feat for the very first time, so thank you, Heather. And, and uh, so if you did not receive your prayer card or if you have any questions about it, please let me know. Uh, it's just an opportunity for us to literally pray it forward. We have our prayer list that we take home each week and pray over on a regular basis. But this is an opportunity for us to ensure that every member and friend of Hanning Memorial United Methodist Church is being prayed for by name. And you may receive a name that you know quite well, and you may receive a name that you are not familiar with. And that's where we just trust the spirit of the living God to know and to see that when we pray this name, that the spirit will work in that life in a way that brings peace and comfort and healing. And I hope it's encouraging to you to know that someone is praying for you by name. This is Christ the King Sunday. Next Sunday begins Advent. So you're all invited after church to stay and help decorate, to transform this already beautiful sanctuary into a space that welcomes Advent. You can stay right after worship service or come after your Sunday school hour. But today we are finishing this series with Pray It Forward. So John 11 may be a story that is familiar with you. It is about uh, three siblings, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, you may know of them, and they are dear friends of Jesus. And so during this time, Lazarus becomes very sick. They get word to Jesus that his friend Lazarus is sick. But Jesus delays in coming. He doesn't drop everything and go, which personally I wish Jesus would especially when I am in need and when I have a concern and when my life is tangled. But for whatever reason, and even though it might be a little disturbing for some of us, but that's another sermon for another day, but we find that by the time Jesus gets to Lazarus, he has died. As a matter of fact, he's been in the grave four days. His sisters are devastated not only with grief at the death of their brother, but as we will see when we enter the scripture, the if-onlys. And many of us, we may not can relate to the story of Lazarus, but we can relate to that moment of if-only. If-only. And they have these thoughts towards Jesus. Martha meets Jesus when he finally gets there. And there is this profound confession that Martha makes about Jesus being Christ the King, about Jesus being Messiah. But before she gets to that proclamation, she has a space and she has a relationship with Jesus that is strong enough that she can confess her grief, her uncertainty. If only you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus creates a space for Martha to be honest about where she is and what she's feeling in this moment. And so we're going to pick up this story in verse 25. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Verse 27, Martha replied, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, God's Son, the one who is to come, the one who is coming into the world. So Martha goes back into the house and she tells her sister Mary that Jesus is here and he's asking for her. So Martha has had this space and now Mary is invited into this space. 
So as the story continues, I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel according to John chapter 11, beginning in verse 32. When Mary arrived where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. When Jesus saw her crying and the Jews who had come with her crying also, he was deeply disturbed and troubled. He asked, where have you laid him? They replied, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to cry. The Jews said, see how much he loved him. But some of them said, he healed the eyes of the man born blind. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Verse 38. Jesus was deeply disturbed again when he came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone covered at the entrance. Jesus said, remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said, Lord, the smell will be awful. He's been dead four days. Jesus replied, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see God's glory? So they removed the stone. Jesus looked up and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. I know you always hear me. I say this for the benefit of the crowd standing here so that they will believe that you sent me. Having said this, Jesus shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his feet bound and his hands tied and his face covered with a cloth. Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And as always, at a time such as this, it's my prayer that God would use me in spite of me, that my words would not become a hindrance to God's word, and that each of us might be as present in this moment as the living Christ is present among us. Years ago, a former district superintendent told me about something he did with this story as a devotional. And I thought it was brilliant, and I couldn't wait to go back to my little home church and try it. It was a small country church in northeast Louisiana, and at that time we had around 15 in worship, and 18 or so if Miss Betty brought her grandkids. And my parents were also a member of this church, and my dad sang bass in a southern gospel quartet, so he had that deep bass voice. And so I gave him a handheld mic, and he sat there in his place. And uh, I had Matt, Mrs. Betty's oldest grandson that was in the church, and I had him in the back, and I had wrapped him up in paper towels, and he was there just waiting wrapped him from head to toe. And so I read the scripture just as I did this morning, except when I got to the part Jesus shouted with a loud voice, my dad took over. Lazarus, come forth. Well, Aideen screamed. She was sitting right behind my dad. And that woke up two guys who were sleeping over here. And the rest of the church was just in chaos could not figure out what has happened, and I'm just, I'm not sure how I'm going to get control again, and then all of a sudden, here comes Matt, walking slowly towards me, and I'm beginning to think I probably should have wrapped him in cloth and not paper towels, because this isn't working that great, but his little sister saw him, who was just a, maybe a toddler at the time, and she started crying, and that started another uproar. They're snickering, and it's just the biggest mess. And here's Matt standing before me, wrapped in what, the paper towels that are left. And we just stare at each other. <laughs> and all I know to do is continue to read Scripture. The dead man came out his feet bound and his hands tied and his face covered mostly, with a cloth, Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Just me and Matt. Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. I look at Matt, 
And Matt looks at me for what seems like an eternity. Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. And I can feel the heat rushing from the soles of my feet to the top of my head. And I feel like I'm about to pass out. And there's Matt just standing there. Jesus said, untie him. And finally, Brenda from the back of the church begins to walk forward. Gladys joins her. A couple of other people join her. And they began to unwrap Matt. I failed to give Matt instructions after that. So he just looks at me and said, may I go now? <laughs> I said, yes, Matt. You are free to go. Never, ever tried that again in a church service, but it is one of my most favorite stories on this side of having to live it out. Because I believe with all of my heart, when we pray for one another, that there is an opportunity for an unbinding. There is an opportunity, even in the tangledness, for light to shine through. Work that leads to freedom from the things that bind us, fear, anger, unforgiveness, grief, all of those things that had Lazarus bound by death. But remember, Mary and Martha, they were bound by the if-onlys, right? To pray for one another so that we may be untangled, set free from those things that bind us. Even